that you from it. And we always give you the best gift. Sometimes the foods don't come out. Come to me and Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Barnstable, and welcome to the YMCA State Bar. Uh, I'm Mark Ellis, Barnstable's town manager. Uh, I feel like very, very at ease in this room. All six of my kids came here and went to Children's Crossing, and uh, we had a wonderful experience. And now I'm surrounded by, you know, this amazing group of people here, um, you know, to, to talk with you in a moment. But I just want to say, on behalf of the town of Barnstable, welcome. Um, on, the, on behalf of our town council, um, we're so happy that you're here. We're so excited about what you're going to share with us today. Thank you. So, um, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so yeah. much. We really, really appreciate it, Mark. Good morning. <laughs> well, that that's really cool because as you were saying that, Mark. Rep Dig said his kids went here, and Senator Moran said her kids went here. I don't know if anybody else has kids. You, yeah, you. Wow. All right. How about that? All right. So this is a uh, this is really cool. Really, really cool to uh, to be here this morning. There's no better way to start a day than with our littlest learners and all the great people who work so hard to take care of them. So. Thank you for opening up um, your doors to our administration this morning. Thank you, Superintendent Ahern, and everyone from Barnstable for a really warm welcome. Um, I want to thank the YMCA Cape Cod for hosting us today. Our, our wives do such important work all day long and into the evening serving young people, serving families in so many ways, in such a holistic way. And this is part of that holistic vision of, of what you guys implement every day. So thank you for all the work that you do. To our legislative partners, all this is possible because programs and initiatives like the one we're gonna talk about are funded. So I wanna thank our legislative colleagues, Senator Moran, Senator Sear, Representative Diggs, Representative Vieira, uh, for your partnership and, and commitment to early education and child care and other issues. And many thanks to our leaders in education in the administration. The Lieutenant Governor and I feel really, really fortunate to be working with incredible folks like our Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler, and our Commissioner of Early Education and Care, Amy Kershaw. Thank you both. I also want to acknowledge we have members of our school committee here um, as well, and thank you for the hard work that you do day in and day out. Um, we're going to hear a little bit later from Jennifer Berger, who's our Head Start educator and, and leader here, and we want to thank all those involved in Head Start and in early education and care more generally. We're here today because affordable, high, are they, that's awesome. <laughs> Are they just like on their own now? <laughs> All the educators are in this room. They are like psyched. Snacks everywhere. Oh, it's great. All right, we're just, just going to continue. Um, so look, you know, affordable, high quality education is a priority for our administration. It has been out of the gate. And this is a place that we come to because we know that great early education is happening right here. And this community, like so many others, also need more resources to help our kids. We also know that the high cost of care is holding back both providers and those who want to serve, as well as families. We know that pre-kindergarten classrooms not only relieve childcare costs, they also importantly set our young people up for success in life. That's why this year we came in and we set a new goal. And the goal is this, let's have universal pre-K in all 26 gateway communities across Massachusetts in the next two years, and eventually every four-year-old statewide. That's where we're going. That's what we're starting to make happen 
uh, by launching something we call Gateway to Pre-K. Today, we're announcing yet another step forward in putting that plan into action. We're awarding 16 school districts in Gateway cities and rural communities a combined total of $3.4 million to expand access to affordable, high-quality preschool. These grants come through the expansion of an existing program, which is the Commonwealth Preschool Partnership Initiative, or CPPI, that we funded with the legislature this year in this year's budget. Nine currently participating districts from Springfield to Sandwich will be able to expand their efforts as a result. They'll add 32 preschool classrooms for an additional nearly 500 seats across public schools, Head Starts, YMCAs, and other community-based school programs. In addition, seven districts will receive CPPI grants for the first time, including right here in Barnstable. So that's great. We are also going to cover Fitchburg, Quincy, Pittsfield, Wareham, uh, Worcester, and the Gateway Regional District, which includes rural towns in Western Massachusetts. We're now supporting preschool access in a total of 17 out of our 26 Gateway cities, moving us closer to achieving the goal we set of all 26 and bringing rural communities into the fold as well. These programs meet the needs of diverse families, build on trusted relationships with institutions, organizations like YMCA, and promote inclusion through special education across all settings. So we want to keep them growing because we know they are a great, great thing. Um, as I say, we recognize that childcare costs are holding us back. They're holding women out of the workforce. They're holding families back in terms of what they want to do. They're holding our economy back. And that's why we came in with the goal of making historic investments in childcare. It's what we did last year through the budget and what we're proposing to do again this year. So I want to thank our education team, our legislative partners, and our local providers for working towards the realization of a shared commitment to this important goal. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our fabulous uh, Secretary of Education, Dr. Pat Tutwiler. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh. Good, morning. good morning. I mean, I really think, Governor, uh, this is a celebration, is it not? Okay. Well, well, I'm telling you. Yeah, the party is uh, next door right after this. Uh, again, uh, my name is Pat Tutwiler, and I have the great privilege of serving as your Secretary of Education. Uh, I always appreciate uh, when whoever is introducing me says my name to uh, dispel any uh, rumors or misconceptions that somehow Shaquille O'Neal is here <laughs> delivering remarks. Uh, no, it is your Secretary, Pat Tutwiler, and it is wonderful to be here. Uh, I really feel like I'm in my element in this space right now here with all of you. Uh, when I got here, a uh, gentleman asked me, yeah, do you need to use the restroom? I said, no, show me where the kids are. That's where I want to be and have the great privilege of seeing uh, the commissioner reading to the students as they're embarking on a unit on Africa. Wonderful, wonderful things going on here. And it's great to be here with you. Also in community with uh, Kate Marie Roycroft, the CEO of the Y Alliance. Uh, and also had the great pleasure of meeting Kelly Lunin, uh, who is the Program Director for Children and Families for uh, the YMCA. Appreciate the work that you all do uh, so deeply. And so I can say definitively, I mean, you heard it from the governor, since day one, they have prioritized, the governor, uh, we have prioritized, I was getting to that governor, all right. Uh, we have prioritized early education and care uh, for, for so many reasons, but I'll tell you it reflects a real mindset shift. Uh, part of that mindset shift is away from this idea that somehow education begins in kindergarten. No, 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 it begins at birth. And we need to address that and we need to support the work that's happening here. But also, as the governor said, the experiences that the kids have here learning about Africa and Europe the year before, 
Uh, these experiences, learning how to socialize with one another, building those early literacy and numeracy skills are really foundational for kindergarten readiness for sure, but they're foundational for these students' lives. We are putting the building blocks in place for these students' lives, and it's so incredibly important. And so we are really excited about the Gateway to Pre-K initiative. As the governor said, uh, we intend to be uh, offer pre-K access universally in all of our Gateway communities by the year 2026. Uh, that is an aggressive, ambitious goal, but one that we have to get right and have to get to. It's that important. Uh, and so uh, folks who know me well know that uh, I, I struggle to leave these spaces when I get here because I'm so excited to be in community with, with educators, uh, with families and supporters of this incredible work, including our new partners now in Barnstable, uh, really excited about uh, the work ahead for them, uh, building these important experiences uh, for our youngest learners. Uh, this is an investment, right, and in the success of our students, but it's really an investment in the Commonwealth as well. We're so excited to push this work forward in partnership with you all. So thank you for having us. I'm really excited to move this work forward. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the superintendent of Barnstable, uh, Superintendent Ahern. Good morning. Thank you so very much. I'm so thrilled to be welcoming the Healy administration and our elected officials here today. I'm joined this morning by Barnstable School Committee member, member Andre King. And I also want to uh, point out uh, Nikki Cucci and Ellen McLaughlin, who are our two early learning center administrators who have spearheaded our grant proposal. We are so proud in Barnstable to be one of the CPPI planning and implementation grant recipients. A strong preschool learning experience is the foundation upon which young children build social, emotional, physical, and academic skills. We appreciate the lens on equity in prioritizing gateway cities, recognizing that while all students benefit from preschool, the largest gains are seen among students who are economically insecure and also students who are dual language learners. Barnstable is so proud of its 170 student integrated early learning center but we know that there are additional opportunities presenting themselves when we team up with early learning providers in our community in recognition that there are hundreds of other preschool students uh, within our uh, city's boundaries. We look forward to our planning grant activities with community partners, especially the YMCA here in Cape Cod. We know that we have the um, great potential to reach and serve even more Barnstable children during this critical period of their development. And as an employer in the area, uh, I would want to emphasize too the opportunity that this presents in terms of our recruitment efforts for faculty and staff, as well as municipal employees and for other uh, industries on Cape Cod, including the hospital and healthcare. Uh, this is going to be critical to our recruitment efforts in support of families on the Cape. Indeed, a strong preschool experience springboards students towards school readiness and improved outcomes in their future school years. We are so appreciative of the support of the Healy administration and our elected officials so that we can serve even more learners and families. At this time, I would like to introduce Jennifer Berger of Head Start to the podium for the most. Thank you, good morning. Um, my name is Jennifer Berger. I've been a preschool teacher here with the Y for a good 18 years now. Uh, <laughs> this morning I wanted to take a moment to invite you to just close your eyes and remember back to your own childhood. During that time, I want you to remember a teacher that impacted your life. A teacher that made you feel joy and a spark to move forward in your own dreams. Remember that joy and spark and open your eyes. That spark is the driving force behind teachers here at the YMCA Cape Cod. Every day, we not only strive to make our children feel loved and inspired, but push them to achieve their potential. Throughout our day, we spend our time making our children smile and progress in their early education. Along with pushing them to achieve their goals, set to them to thrive in kindergarten and in life, skills from taking a deep breath to learning our ABCs are crucial. We are very proud to know that when children leave us to go to kindergarten, 
They're recognized in our community as thriving children from the YMCA Cape Cod. Many of our children have grown up here and returned not only to say hello, but to work for us and continue our mission. Receiving this grant will ensure that for years to come, children will thrive in a positive environment. The CPPI grant allows us to expand affordable preschool access on Cape Cod. For many parents, they call to enroll their child into preschool and are faced with a very long wait list again and again. Preschool experiences are vital in building social interactions at a young age and elevating their development to meet our public school expectations. Early education provides the basic structure that will be used in public school along with life. Time and time again, we all hear, it takes a village to raise a child. Here begins a mixed delivery system. Working with community-based early education programs helps to connect those dots of learning. And with help from grants such as this and local resources such as the Department of Early Education and Care, Head Start, and our local public school systems, we can reach resources together to help child, children thrive in all areas of development. Inclusion then becomes fluid and easier. Resources and understanding are across all of our programs. Many of you may also hear about our diminishing workforce in an already difficult profession. By utilizing the CPPI grant, we can not only begin to unify the education system, but are showing educators support for one another and aligning our quality programs. Over time, educators will feel supported and begin expanding the workforce to meet our community needs. To conclude, we are very thrilled and excited to receive this opportunity today. The CPI grant, CPPI grant will help us continue making a positive change in our community and create that living spark within, within our children that will help them grow. Thank you so much, especially to Governor Healy and commis our Commissioner of Early Education and Care, Amy Kershaw, for all your dedicated hard work and all of the other people behind that. Um, not only a thank you from myself, but all of our early educators and all the future children that will benefit from this opportunity. I would now like to reintroduce Governor Healy back up to the podium. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and to, to all of our speakers. We're happy to answer questions on topic right now. We're good? We're all set. Sure. Um, so the uh, over the next several months, we'll have a team um, led by a plan, a planning coordinator um, to work uh, across with community partners to identify opportunities. Um, it's a pretty short duration over the next several months between now and uh, the end of August to then identify opportunities where we'll be able to reach more students. In terms of number of seats, I don't think we quite know that at this point in time. Um, but over the next several months, we'll be able to answer that and hope that we can continue on with an implementation during the future. All right, great. Well, um, have a good morning, everybody. And again, a uh, particular thanks to our providers and those on the front lines caring for and nurturing and inspiring our youngest. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.